Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Very glad that you are here. I appreciate you joining me. Today, we're gonna talk about why you need to slow down and how there is no rush to any of this. Although, contrary to the incredibly widespread popular belief slash subconscious programming that we've been drilled into or it's been drilled into our minds and our whole being since you know day one that you've got to do this by this time and you got to do it in this order it has to look like this you got to do what everyone else does you're a loser <laughs> now what does that mean how does that relate to the video topic today so today's video is about slowing down this is a reminder for you to slow down that there is no rush to any of this there's no rush to any of this. There's no rush to get things done. There's no rush to find a partner and get married. There's no rush to have kids. There's no rush to uh, be a millionaire. There's no rush to get in shape. We're all in such a rush all the time that we forget that there's really no end to this. So what are we rushing for? I've noticed in myself and many other people, we have a tendency to always be moving on to the next thing to be wondering what's next, to have what we're currently focused on in creating whatever current goal we're trying to achieve, to complete it now, to get it done now. I want it right now, I want it yesterday. But if I can't have it yesterday, I want it right now. And if I can't have it right now, I want it 10 minutes from now. Or if I can't have it 10 minutes from now, what about by the end of today? So everything that we do, and since we've been told for such a long time, literally since the beginning of time, Everything is about being in a rush that we need to hurry. And I think this is so detrimental to our overall well-being. So this video is about how you need to and I need to both slow down and remember that there's no rush to this stuff. Think about it like this. You have wanted to achieve a goal for a while. You wanted to you know, find a partner. You wanted to uh, start your business. You wanted to whatever get in shape is a big one right and I always use that because of my background in fitness and people are like oh man I want to lose 35 pounds in five days can we do that and I'm just like uh if you want to die you can do that and that was the biggest thing that I always remember is that especially when it comes to fitness everybody wants results now but they don't want to do the things necessary to achieve the results that quickly because it's super intense and honestly when you try to do things quickly it gets broken down or torn down just as easily. This is why people go on diets, they crash diet, crash workout for a month or two and lose 20 pounds, but then they gain it all back and then some because that's not a healthy and sustainable way. All they did was radically change their behavior and the way that they live for a short period of line to shock their body, but it didn't create a sustainable change. It just shocked them into unhealthily like reforming their physique for a shorter period of time and then it kind of rebounds. So just like working out, there's no rush to it. And actually, the more you rush it, the more unstable it becomes. It's the same thing with your business. You would love for overnight your business to absolutely blow up. But if you went from only selling $5,000 a month, would you really be ready to sell $20,000, $25,000 a month? And then all of a sudden you have this huge influx of problems because you're understaffed and you don't have you know, the, the right infrastructure, you don't have the right people in place, you don't have the right systems in place, and all of a sudden you're super stressed out, you end up losing all the business that you initially got and then some because now your reputation is ruined. So these are just some examples about how we're always in a rush and we need to move things forward because we're wired that way because of what we've been programmed to believe, but none of that is true. As I just shared in those examples that you already know, the faster we try to go, the more unstable they are, the actually harder it is to build something that's going to last because we're rushing it. So with your life, there's no rush to any of this, guys. There's no rush. Societal expectations, that's what society does. It puts these expectations on you that you have to get a college degree. Oh, you better be married and have kids by uh, your early mid-20s. You don't wanna be one of those old parents. It's like in their 30s with kids or in their 40s, oh, you don't wanna do that. If you if you don't have kids by the time you're you know, right out of college or short after, you're a loser, especially if you're a woman. Oh my God, you can't find a man. So, you know, like it's so toxic, it's so crazy, but a lot of the times we don't think about the societal expectations and brainwashing that's being 
that we're being bombarded with that we are being just hammered with every single day, but that none of it's true. None of it's true. There are people that started later than you that are doing less than you're doing now. There are people that started way before you that are doing way more than you in a shorter period of time. Expectations, us measuring up to other people's situations is so pointless because when we try to put ourselves up against others by comparing ourselves, there's no point because they're a different person. They started at a different place. They have a different skill set with a different mindset and a different makeup. They're a different person. So how can you expect your journey to be faster or slower than theirs comparatively when you're not the same people with not the same starting points and not the same skill set? So it's crazy to think that we're comparing ourselves to other people when they started at a different place and we're in different places. So it's just complete BS and such a toxic behavior that's been ingrained for us to do to compare ourselves with other people. There's no point in it. And that's where we get overwhelmed. That's where we become anxious. That's where we, we brainwash ourselves to think that we're not doing good enough because we don't have all this other stuff because I don't have a house yet like all my friends or I'm not married with three kids. Oh my God, I'm retire uh, behind on my retirement like everyone else. Um, oh my God, you know, everybody loves to judge other people. It, I think that's so funny is that we like to judge other people and that's what society and other people will do. They'll use these benchmarks to judge you so they can feel superior because they're actually feeling insecure because they followed along with society's programming, but not what they really wanted. So now God forbid somebody shows them the light of like, yeah, this isn't really what I wanted, but I did what I was told and I have what everyone said I should have and do what everyone said I should do. So I should be happy, right? But I'm really not because I didn't follow my calling and that's not to say my life is bad, but look, you're not where I'm at. So that makes me better than you, right? That's kind of the cycle that goes on with people. Oh, you're not married. You're a loser. You don't have kids. You're a loser. Oh, you don't have this much money or you're not doing this much by this age group. Oh, you're a loser. And this is what gets us to be brainwashed into thinking that there's we're in a, we should be in a rush, that we need to be doing things at the same pace and speed as everybody else. No, not at all. Because again, we're in different places in our lives. We're different people with different starting points, with different skill sets, with different experiences, with different backgrounds. So somebody may take off in this one vocation. Another person might not at all. It doesn't really matter because again, they're different people. So don't compare yourselves with other people. Slow down and realize that there's no rush to this. You don't have to get married by a certain age. You don't have to get kids by a certain age. You don't have to own a house. You don't have to retire by a certain age. There's these benchmarks are all arbitrary. Who made these up? Who said you're behind if you didn't do this by this age? Who said you're behind? The person who did it? Okay, well then there's someone who did it faster than them. So does that make them behind in their lives because they didn't achieve these things as faster than the other person that they're comparing themselves to? See what I'm saying? So the main message is don't compare yourself because we all have different starting points and that's what makes us feel anxious when we start to compare ourselves because we don't think we're good enough because that's the society of programs. That's, you're good enough, you're fine. You're exactly where you're supposed to be. As a matter of fact, if you're watching this, you're a light worker, you're a star seed, you've probably been victimized and bullied and taken advantage of and you've had to overcome a ton more than most other people that you know. You're definitely, at least on a surface financial level or whatever, you might not be on the same place as them because the experiences that you've had are for a reason that have created another level of depth, of intellect, of wisdom, of awareness, of healing, of sensitivity that other people will just simply never have because of the things that you've had to go through. But you've been made to think that you are wrong for not having these same things on the surface level, yet they have no idea of this level of understanding about energy and people and sensitivity that you've developed from your experiences. So you may not be on the same place as they are on the surface level for whatever they're judging you, but they have no idea about the energy that you hold, what really matters and what's going on underneath the surface. So don't let other people speed you up, slow down. There's no rush to any of this. One of the great books I always recommend, especially to men, but really men and women, especially if you're having relationship problems or you have in the past, I highly recommend everybody reads The Way of the Superior Man, man or woman. It is written for heterosexual men, <clears throat> However, what it talks about is the masculine and feminine energies regardless of your sex. So it doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman, it's talking about the masculine and feminine energies, 
and how they interplay with one another when it comes to romantic relationships. But what it does, especially for, well, for everybody, it helps you understand yourself better as a, from a perspective of not um, male or female, but from masculine or feminine. One of the things that David Data talks about in this book, The Way the Superior Man, as a matter of fact, the very first topic he talks about, stop hoping for completion for anything in life. That's the first section. And it's like a short two page excerpt, three page, whatever. And that's basically it, guys. There's no rush to any of this because it never gets done. Fast forward your life now. Okay, now you're a multimillionaire. You're independently wealthy. You literally have more money than you could ever spend in your life. You've done all the traveling. You've done all these things. You're going to, there's something else that's going to come up. You're going to get bored. You're going to have a lot of, you're going to have means and, and have a lot of fun and do a lot of things or whatever that you had on your list. But now you're super wealthy. Okay, so what next? What next? So now you conquered the money game. You don't have to worry about money. You've done a bunch of adventures and stuff. So what next? Doesn't matter how rich you are. That's why you hear people like Tony Robbins who coaches these billionaires, like, you know, the freaking billionaire rap artist, right? Who's got all the girls and the cars and the money and the status and the fame and all this stuff. And he's suicidally depressed or the same with like the, the, the CEO billionaire who has so many companies and so much money. He's achieved everything. Once you've done all that stuff, what is there to achieve? And that's why these people get depressed because it's our pursuit of something next that gets us excited, that keeps us motivated. We only feel anxious when we feel like we're behind because we should have already achieved that. We should have already had that. We should have already hit that box, check that uh, box off on our to-do list for life or our bucket list or our list of accomplishments. It's all BS, man. It's all BS because it doesn't matter where you go. Okay, now you got a new race. You just bought a house. Okay, great. There's going to be something next. The point is stop hoping for completion because whatever level that you reach, no matter how high, especially with the higher you get and the more successful you become on these different levels, there's always something next. So for us to feel anxious or overwhelmed is saying that, oh, I'm in a rush. I got done with that thing. Cool, whatever. I'm on to the next thing. Then I'm on to the next thing. But nothing is ever good enough because you're not satisfied. You're not enjoying the journey and the process. You lack the understanding that there's no end to this. There's always going to be a level. Literally, think about it. Okay, you just made $100 million. Okay, what's next? $200 million? $500 million? If you're, a, if you're worth $100 million, now I'm not, so I don't know, but I've heard wealthy people talk about this and it seems like it, there's some truth to it. I think once you reach these certain thresholds in money, is $100 million really that much different from $200 million? I don't think so. It doesn't sound like it. $500 million. Okay. I'm sure once you get into a billion things change, all these things, right? However, there's always levels. And once you reach certain levels, well, what next? Okay, great. So the point is stop comparing yourself. Don't hope for any uh, completion for anything in life. This is what keeps you anxious and always wanting to move on to the next thing without being satisfied with your current accomplishments. Take your time. There's no rush to any of this. So we tend to move on from one thing to the next without giving ourselves a chance to breathe and ground into what we've achieved. And this is where it comes. Uh, this is where the saying comes from. The destination, it's not the destination, it's the journey. It is the journey. It's the step-by-step -step going about this. Because let me ask you this. When you are eating a good meal, when you're eating a good meal, was it a good meal? Because when you got done with the meal, you were like, man, that was a good meal. No, the eating came from the process of enjoying all the good food that you were chewing, that you were putting in your body, that you were enjoying, that you were looking at, that you were smelling it. It's the process of eating. It's not the completion of eating that made the meal so satisfying. It was the journey of eating, the process of eating, not the final completion of the meal. Same thing when you're having sex. Sure, you have an orgasm, it's great, you finish. But are is it great sex because of just the uh, finish, the completion of the sex. No, it was the act of having sex, the whole act, the foreplay, the leading up to it, the, um, uh, you know, the, the process of it. It wasn't just the completion. The completion is great. You're like, oh man, I feel great. We're all awesome. So it's the same thing in life, guys. It's the, it's not the completion of life. It's not about us rushing through and saying, oh, I'm done. I finished life. It's about all these little things that we do during our process of life. It was that promotion you got to a manager at the McDonald's you first work out, and now you look back as a multimillionaire of a, of a business that you built. It was the days, it was the process, it was the 
getting fired from McDonald's even, and now you're a multimillionaire business owner. It was that process that made it so awesome that now you have your business, you can look back. It was the, it was your wife cheating on you and then getting a divorce that made you, that process that made you appreciate this incredible marriage that you have now. It's the process of what we go through. So slow down, there's no rush any of this. We're not trying to finish anything. Enjoy all the steps without rushing on to the next thing. Because sure, right now I'm like sitting here and I'm like at 2,000 whatever, some odd subscribers. When I'm sitting here at 200,000, is it gonna be that much different? Yes, I'm sure it will because I know some things in my life will have changed. But the process of what I'm doing, I'm still gonna be getting on camera making videos about personal development, about uh, spiritual, about, self um, about self-awareness, about higher consciousness, about some of the more esoteric concepts that we'll start to talk about soon. Some of these, I'm still gonna be doing the same thing. So it's the process. Yeah, sure, it'll be a nice little like, oh, I'll get a silver play button and that'll be cool, whatever, and I'll hang in the background, that'll be cool, great but it's still the process. It's gonna be when I can look back on these videos and go, man, I was crazy. I remember when I was making videos in my car with like 2,000 people, and then now I look back and I've got like 250,000 people, and I'm still pretty much doing the same thing, but it was all those times where I was like, okay, how can I make my videos better? How can I make my messages better? My thumbnails, do I need to put in music? Should I make a little YouTube studio in my apartment? It was, it's, this is the process, guys, so enjoy the process. Slow down. There's no rush to any of this. Again, it's not the completion of the meal. Sure, you feel good afterwards. It's the enjoying the meal all the way through. It's not just the completion of sex. It's having sex. It's the leading up to it. It's the foreplay. It's the buildup. It's the process. So it's the same thing with your life. Anything you're doing in your life, if you feel anxious, slow down. There's no rush to any of this stuff, guys. We're taking it all in stride. It never stops. It never gets done. It never gets old. That's what Abraham Hicks always says too, Esther Hicks. Listen, guys, it never gets done. It's never over and it's never get done. This is what I was saying earlier. Okay, you accomplished this goal, great. It never gets done. There's another level. There's another level to it, so it never gets done. Okay, you achieve something again. It never gets done, guys. It never gets done. You achieve this, there's going to be something new that pops up. This is the way life is supposed to be. So I'll leave with you with a quote today. Focus on the journey, not the destination. Joy is found in finishing, and uh, joy is found not in finishing an activity, but in doing it. Greg Anderson, it's exactly like I was sharing with today. So slow down, stop being a rush for everything. Don't feel overwhelmed, enjoy where you're at right now. If it's shitty, if the situation is really crappy, enjoy it. That is the hardest, I'll tell you what, that's the hardest time to appreciate everything, but that is the most powerful time you can appreciate in everything. That is when you really start to activate some of those universal energies and the power of flow, when you can be grateful in difficult circumstances because that is exercising faith and knowledge of energy and how things work to understand that you're experiencing what you don't want right now so that you can clarify what you do want. I'm telling you, enjoy where you're at right now. And if it's great, enjoy it relish in it. You deserve it. Take your time. Don't be on a rush to move on to the next thing. Good things are coming. It's going to keep getting better and better for us guys. Better and better. But take your time. Slow down. Stop being in a rush. Realize there's no end to this. When you can really grasp this understanding and embody it, the anxiety it goes away, the overwhelm, the lack of worthiness, it all goes away because you now feel worthy, you're just chilling out, you're just enjoying the journey, you're just enjoying your day, you're enjoying the day at work, you know that good things are coming and that this is the process of it. And especially when it's uncomfortable, that is the process, is learning to enjoy that because something greater is coming. That's the whole reason you're experiencing what you don't want. So hopefully that was helpful today, guys. I love you so much. I will be back very soon for another video, uh, getting settled in in my new apartment, kind of building it out a little bit and step by step. So my videos have been a little less, but pretty soon we're gonna fall into a nice flow. We'll be back to pretty much daily or every other daily video. So don't forget to like, subscribe if this is your kind of jam, this is your kind of content. Uh, if you think of somebody or a thought of somebody watching this video that could hear this message, please don't forget to share it with them as well. So love you so much. I'll see you very soon for the next video. Peace.